Welcome to the Real Estate Espresso Podcast, your morning shot of what's new in the world of real estate investing. I'm your host, Victor Manash. Today's another AMA episode. That is, ask me anything. I love to answer your questions. If you have a question you think is going to be of broad interest, send it in. I'll answer it live on the air. Send your questions to victor at victorjm.com. That's victor at victorjm.com. Now, Brendan from Pennsylvania asks, I bought my first commercial rental a few months back using seller financing, and it was a breeze since the property was off market and I could talk directly to the seller. The seller and I haggled it all out based on their retirement needs, and since it was still a good deal, the interest didn't matter that much to me since it had an excellent cash-on-cash return. I'm currently searching my next deal, and I've found one that interests me on the MLS, but the price doesn't make sense as is. The realtor is telling me that the seller will entertain owner-financed offers. Without being able to directly contact the seller without realtor involvement, I'm stuck as to how to build my offer. Well, Brendan, this is a great question. First of all, congratulations on your first successful deal. There's no question that seller financing can be a great financial tool. The thing to remember is that seller financing is still financing and you're still the owner of the property after the transaction closes. The property should still be a property you want to own, not just because of the financing structure. It means that the property is in the right area from a management point of view. You want to know that you're invested in an area where you're going to see an ongoing stream of investment. You want to make sure the investment meets your criteria in terms of supply and demand. For example, if you choose to invest within the radius of, say, a major hospital and target healthcare workers as your ideal tenant, or you might choose to be within the radius of a major university and target students as your ideal client. You want to be in an area where there's inflow of population, inflow of jobs. I'll never invest in an area where it's a shrinking market. At the end of the day, properties are simply part of the inventory of your business. When a seller offers seller financing before there's even been a dialogue with the seller, that can be a red flag. The seller may have listed the property before and the buyer may have failed to secure financing. It could be that perhaps there's a defect with title or a hidden liability such as an environmental issue that lenders won't typically approve. In that case, the seller will sometimes offer seller financing as a way of unloading the property and transferring liability to the new buyer. The lender might be in a position to foreclose on the buyer down the road if they fail to get financing to replace the seller financing at the end of the term. You really want to find out from the broker why the seller is selling the property. You are correct in saying that negotiation will need to be direct with the seller, and some realtors are uncomfortable with a direct discussion with the seller. If they're concerned about that, offer for the realtor to be present in any discussions. That way they're not getting cut out of the conversation. Your strategy of offering a lower purchase price and a larger overall deal value seems to make sense, but in reality, you could actually be offering more than the asking price, but then choosing the payment terms. Let me give you a simple example. Let's say that the seller is asking $100,000 for the property. You want to purchase the property for $50,000 up front, and then, say, $10,000 a year for the next eight years. You could tell the seller that you're offering them $50,000 up front, which they might find alarming. On the other hand, you could offer the entire deal value and set the purchase price at $120,000, so $50,000 plus 8 times $10,000 for a total of $120,000, and then the payment terms would be $50,000 on closing, followed by annual payments of $10,000 for each of the next eight years. Such an offer above the asking price would probably get the seller's attention. Note that a realtor is legally obligated to send any offer to the seller. The realtor can't hold on to the offer even if they don't like it. Now, Once you're in the dialogue with the seller, you can have a discussion about what's more advantageous from a structural point of view. The seller may want to have the payment secured on title using a collateral mortgage until the property is paid in full. That's their traditional seller financing. But before you place the offer with the seller, you may want to search title and find out when the property last changed hands. If they've owned it for 30 years and the seller is sitting on a large taxable gain, then the seller financing could be an effective tool for the seller to defer some tax consequence. The tax consequence for the seller is going to depend on how the deal is written. The purpose of this show is not to provide tax advice, and of course every situation is different. You may ultimately structure the purchase as seller financing if that's the best structure for both you and the seller. But don't get locked into that. A great property in a great location that qualifies for conventional financing can be just as good, and in many cases better, than something the seller financed. I want to thank you, Brendan, for an awesome question. As you think about that, have a great rest of your day. Go make some great things happen. I'll talk to you again tomorrow.